And a very good evening, everybody. It is Thursday, May the 5th. It is Cinco de Mayo, everybody. Put your hat on and let's do some dancing tonight. How about that? But good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. And thank you to, for joining us as always. And hello to everybody that's watching us online, Facebook, YouTube, live or later. Glad you have tuned in. But good evening, everybody. Good evening, Joey. Hey, Joey. Hey, Judy. Evening, Joe. Good evening. Okay, well, well. Judy, we haven't seen any hummingbirds yet. Well, mine, like I told you last night on um, text, mine comes out at sunset. That's one little bird. That's all I've seen. <laughs> sunset. <No. laughs> Maybe Great. later. Mary Jean said that we've got about 20 or 30. Oh, well, ours have gone south then. That's good. Uh, that, that's where they are. Yeah. Sweeter water. We put, a, <laughs> we put an extra uh, tablespoon of sugar in ours. I guess so. <laughs> they haven't made it this far south. I haven't seen any down here. I've got a bunch of red birds, though. Um, that's relative, isn't it? That, that's all that's all my all my people that have gone on before me coming to see me there you go <laughs> oh me well my I, I was just trying to see if my internet was going to catch up it's uh it's uh it's not doing just fine. I, mean, I can hear y'all okay. It's just the video's bad. Uh oh. Well, your video's good on our end or mine. Mine too. Yeah. Well, I mean, my my watching myself, uh, I'm pretty much real time. And uh, but everybody else is a little slow. But anyway, <laughs> here we go. I'm trying to, uh, you can see, I just got out of the shower and uh, <laughs> ate a little supper. All right, what is Joey? Are you doing that on purpose, Joey? <laughs> I'm good. I was just messing with you. Just messing with you. Oh, my, my wet hair. Well, I think uh, that's what it means. You look like you're doing the robot. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, anyways, uh, I am uh, uh, had a good week. Uh, I am, uh, I am, be honest with you, dog tired. And uh, uh, last, uh, when did I do the first? Like, like last Thursday and Friday, I built a raised bed and I unloaded a couple of lo a load of dirt and then this week I've done either two or three more loads of dirt and uh, it was just a, a gentle reminder that I'm not as young as I used to be <laughs> uh, and I have but but anyways I'm thankful uh, I'm very, very thankful that I was able to do that, and uh, uh, er everything's well here in, in Asheville, Alabama, as far as I know. Um, uh, Antoinette had a uh, field trip today that she is on her way back, so don't expect her to be on tonight. And uh, have you you heard hide her hair of, of Pat, Judy? Is she doing all right? Well... When I left the house at 10 this morning, she was cleaning up her car. When I got back at 1.30, she was still cleaning up her car. And then she took off in that clean car. <laughs> she hasn't been oh, my God. <laughs> I need to go park my truck over there one day. <laughs> yeah. I asked her if I could get one. <laughs> Boy, she, uh, he must have been going somewhere. Yeah, probably so. But uh, anyways, uh, let's uh, let, let's open with a word of prayer tonight. 
Most gracious Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you for uh, all the things that you uh, do for us. And Lord, we just thank you for this time. And though we may be a little smaller crowd tonight, Lord, we ask you to bless us just the same. Uh, be with all my friends who are not with us tonight and be with all those who are watching online or may watch later. Lord, we, uh, uh, we just ask that you would just open our minds, open our eyes, open our ears, that uh, we might hear what you have to say to us tonight. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I got a uh, message today from a former co-worker and uh, uh, it really uh, disturbed me and shook me. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, who has been doing our taxes for the last 20 years a uh, guy I used to work with, uh, Andy Key. He was a principal in the company Man Porch Miller and Key. And uh, he uh, found out he died in a car wreck last Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And uh, his funeral was today. I found out about two hours before. And uh, it was just, uh, uh, he, he died in a, uh, I think it was a single car accident uh, in the back roads of Walker County. And uh, oh, he, lived, he lived in Jasper. And so I would ask you to remember the key family, specifically uh, Donna and Madison and uh, his mother and the other family members. Uh, Andy was a great guy. Uh, we just... Uh, we just wrote him a check for doing our taxes this year. Uh, he was a good friend and uh, he and I uh, took a couple trips together and uh, he, uh, just, he was just a super guy, super guy. He sorely missed. Uh, are there any others we need to add to our list? Are you saying that his last name was Key, K-E-Y? A-E-Y. First name in the news was Andreas. Okay. Andreas Key, uh, but Andy Key. Well, we, we called him Andy. Yeah. Gosh, that's terrible. Yeah, 51 years old. Wow. Way too soon. Yep. Sure was. Kathy, did you go to uh, school with Philip Maker? What's that last name again? Mager, and I might be saying it wrong, M-E-A-G-E-R. But I, I think it was pronounced Mager. He, uh, he has been a, uh, a youth minister at some of the local churches, and he's had health problems for a long time. He passed away this week. Uh, and then a, another uh, death in Southside that, that a longtime community leader. Uh, they called him Wild Bill Smith. He yeah. passed away. Saw him several mornings at Jack's. Yes. Mm -hmm. You had to be careful around him. He would tell off color jokes. Yes, he would. <laughs> he was a character. Uh, I knew Wild Bill very well yeah for a long time uh mm -hmm. he, uh i for some reason uh he he really took a liking to me and uh i known him a good part of my life and uh he uh i i think he made it a lot longer than a lot of people thought he would i, I saw mm -hmm. him uh six months ago maybe maybe last summer i saw him fairly recently and mm -hmm. uh he, he was kind of old and frail but uh mm -hmm. I, I believe his wife's name's laura mm -hmm. yeah and, uh, but uh, he, he lived right down the road from us uh uh we lived on dunn road in south side and in it where Dunn Road ends into Smith Road, uh, 
he, he lived right across the street, had a big spread and lots of farm animals and all. And he, he, he was a fine fellow. Yeah, he was. He, he had a lot of friends. They threw him a birthday get together not long ago with the south side uh, of seed and plants or something where they sell a lot of garden stuff and yeah. he would go there every day and they I forgot how many hundreds of people came through that day to, to wish him a happy birthday. Yeah he he was he was an icon in South Side for sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Everybody knew Wild Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, any others we need to add to our prayer list? Got a great report on Bill Owen. Bill Owen? Uh -huh. All this cancer is either gone or he's got liver cancer, lung cancer, lung cancer, the lining of his lungs. He's got it, I don't know, two or three other places, and it's almost gone. And everywhere, all the numbers have dropped from the 30s and 40s down to three and four. His lung cancer is gone. Bill Owen. Uh, so they were at thanking everybody for the prayers to keep him coming. Is that Gideon Ems? Um, that's a gentleman from Heflin. Yeah. Gentleman from Heflin, Bill Owen, that we've been has been on our prayer list. Uh, he's had got cancer in several places and and got a good report this week. Uh, his cancer, one of his cancers is gone for sure. Or is it all of them? No, most of them are gone, but they've dropped significantly the numbers have. Okay. All the numbers have dropped, which is good. And and most of his cancers are gone, so that was a fantastic report. Uh, obviously, an answer to prayer for sure. Amen. All right. Any any others? All right. Well, uh, folks, it's just us today, I guess. Uh, we all got a lot, a lot going on, and uh, so we'll, uh, we we'll, we'll, we will get started. I'll, uh, I'll open up uh, with Fridays, uh, and uh, it is today and forever. Hebrews three five, thirteen five says, "God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you." Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but before before I read the, the devotion, I just want to say I, I know we got a small group here, but uh, I want to tell you this this past Sunday, uh, I think was a great day. Um, I thought uh, it was a powerful Sunday, and uh, just a reminder to me of what Sundays ought to be like. And I just want to thank. I just want to say thank you to all of y'all who participated and were a part of it. And for those of you who weren't there, you missed out for sure. A great day. Amen to that. Okay. The Baltimore Orioles have been one of the worst performing teams in baseball the past few years. But as a lifelong Orioles fan, I still root for them. If I stop cheering for the Orioles because they have been a losing team recently, uh, I would be a, quote, fair-weathered fan, someone who cheers for a team when they are doing well but ignores them when they are doing poorly. Sometimes I act as if I – sometimes I act as if I worship and follow a fair-weathered God. That is – I mistakenly believe that when I am good and obedient, God is near to me and blesses me. But when I stumble and falter, God pulls away and ignores me. But the truth is, we have a loving God who is with us always during our successes and our failures. Yeah. Titus 3.4 states, 
when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. God's desire is always to be close to us so that we can live in joyful service in this life and look forward to spending eternity in heaven with God. I don't give up on the Orioles. Most important, God never gives up on us. Amen. And that is from Mark Karpinski from the Tar Heel State of North Carolina. And the prayer focus is on athletes. And the thought for the day is God's love for me is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Boy, what a, what a great thought that is. Uh, and something to remind us. Uh, it goes back to something Jerry mentions from time to time, the footprints in the sand. Uh, God is always there for us. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he's going to be the same tomorrow. Uh, always there for us. Uh, and, and that was that was something that was difficult for me to wrap my head around. Uh, I kind of always had the idea, like a lot of people, that, well, God's disappointed in me. God's upset with me. Uh, you know, I messed up. And, and it's just not the case. Uh, God is, he, he loves us whether we're good or bad. He just He's just waiting on us to say we're sorry, repent, and and, and keep on going. And, and, and I think that's uh, I think that's something that Satan uses against each one of us. He whispers in our ear, "You're not good enough. You've been too bad. God will never forgive you." And I think too many times we believe that, and it uh, <clears throat> you know. He's a frozen on us. Freeze frame. He used to unplug his router and or modem and plug it back in. Don't say when you walk back in the church. <laughs> He's back now. We lost you for a minute. We lost you for about 20 seconds there, Joe. Yep. Right in the middle of your good thought there. I, uh, you guys have been froze up for about the last 20 seconds. <laughs> That's, bad, That's okay. All right. Keep well, who, who, who's got something to, to say about this? <laughs> I'm just thankful that no matter, you know, sometimes how we treat other people in our lives or that come through our lives, or I'm never going to have anything to do with them again because of what they did to me and all that. I've done it many times, unfortunately, and I've uh, thankfully have uh mended a lot of those uh relationships because of that and uh, i'm just thankful that god's not like that you know because there's many times that god could just throw us all to the side and be like i'm done with y'all <laughs> i'm thankful that he is always there amen I think the Russians are hacking my internet again. <laughs> All right. Any, any other thoughts on this? All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your promise always to remain close to us. Help us always to remain faithful to you. Amen. Amen. All right. Somebody want to do Saturday? I'll do this one unless Jerry wants to. I figured I'd do Friday. <laughs> <laughs> We've already passed Friday. No, next Friday, the first. I mean Sunday, May first. <laughs> we'll let you pressure do pressure washing all day. We'll, we'll let you do my, uh, May first. How about that? All right, that'll work. All right. Saturday, April thirtieth. The title is expectations. 
Psalm 143 verse 8 says, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. Usually when I say I trust you, what I mean is I'm counting on you to do what I want or expect, or I trust you to get this job done on time, or I trust you will pay back what you owe. Naturally, I do the same thing when I talk to God. I trust you not to let my plane crash, or I trust you will heal my friend. A while back, someone I loved had a problem. I prayed that and tried, tried to trust God to fix it. It seemed like the right thing to do, but I got a shock one night when the quiet voice in my head said, trusting God doesn't mean laying out your expectations and believing God will do what you want. It means laying down, laying down, and the word down is emphasized here, laying down your expectations and trusting God. This was a scary yet strangely freeing thought. After all, God knows the future and loves us. Psalm 143, 8 doesn't say, give me what I want because I trust you. <laughs> it says, show me the way that I should go, for to you I entrust my life. David was asking God to show him the way and help him to follow. He entrusted his life to God, and if David can only trust, surely I can too. Amen. From, yeah, amen. That comes from Heather Tekovec from British Columbia, Canada. Prayer focus for this day for trust in hard times and the thought for the day. I trust God when I lay down my expectations and follow God's ways. We've, we've said and we've heard numerous times that our ways are not God's ways. And thank goodness for that. Because what we, what we have laid out, what our plans are, you know, God's got this other plan going on over here. And thankfully he's got us, you know, he'll, he'll get us straightened out, straightened out eventually on that. Um, but of course, you know, it's easy to say, God, I, I trust you and, and I lay this down and, you know, I, I, I'm going to allow you to do what you, what you do. And it's easy for us to say that, obviously, in this moment. But when we, when we are truly faced with hard times, you know, at least with me anyway, there's always some kind of, you know, some kind of something floating around in my mind saying, is this really going to work or is this really going to happen? And to where I am today at this point in life, I give God all the praise and the glory because um, I, you know, could be in a different boat. And thankfully, I'm in the right boat right now. I uh, thank him for that. And the song, if Antoinette were here, only trust him comes to mind. Yeah. We trust him now. Yes. Yeah. Any thoughts from anybody? Number 337 in the hymnal. <laughs> <laughs> that, that story mentions uh, fearing a plane crash, you know, and I'm going to be flying soon, so I always get a little anxious, but um, a friend uh, on our senior uh, reunion, our, our reunion Facebook page said, don't fear flying fear crashing <laughs> yeah. yes that's true <laughs> yeah go ahead no go ahead joe yeah a lot of people say you know they're, they're not afraid of falling uh it's not the fall that'll get you it's that sudden stop <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna say joe no, I was just, I, I think of that, Judy, the same way every time I get on a plane. I haven't been on a plane in a while, uh, but I, I think the exact same thing, my goodness, because I've been, I've been on that, that wing window where, where the window where I can see the wing and, and I know it's designed to do it, but when you look out that window and you're flying, what, how many ever 500 miles an hour whatever it is you're going at thirty five thousand feet and you're looking out there and that wing is just you know doing this yeah. <laughs> a bit like, oh i was like oh hold on <laughs> and I, gives I was, you an I, eerie yeah and Jerry, I, was, I was i was flapping my hands like you know the wing is like you know flapping around <laughs> a little bit 
it's like a bird. But, yeah, and I, and I know mm -hmm. I know it's supposed to do that, designed to do that, and you know that's the from what I heard, from what I hear anyway, the being right there is the safest part of the plane or the strongest part of the plane. Uh, because they're, you know, the wing is right there with you. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just what I've heard. I think um, I picked uh, that's one of the a seat close to the wing on every flight I'm going to be. Yeah. Yeah. You just, and can't you, see a, just can't see a whole lot with the wing underneath you. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. If you get on the exit row, you have more leg room too. That's true. <laughs> but I don't want to be responsible for those people. <laughs> Ma'am, do you accept responsibility if this if we are in a evacuation procedure? Do you or do you accept responsibility to get these people out of this plane? <laughs> I'll be like, I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the first one out of here. Let's <laughs> move. <laughs> Yeah. Give me my parachute. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's good. All right. Anybody else have any other thoughts? Trust him always, y'all. Let's pray and then we'll move on to the month of May. Heavenly Father, teach us to lay down our expectations and trust you to do what is best for us. Amen. 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 Mercy, starting the second quarter already. May Day, May Day. May Day. <laughs> May the fourth be with you when we get to it. Yeah, that was yesterday. Yep, that was yesterday. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. And I saw a post today on Facebook. Somebody put a jar of mayonnaise in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, surely not. Okay. So May will... <laughs> Say what? I think we know that fellow that puts that picture. <laughs> yeah. Sunday, May 1, a tiny puddle. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. All of us are looking with unveiled faces at the glory of the Lord as if we were looking in a mirror. We're being transformed into that same image from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. This comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. On my way to work this morning, I looked up at the sky. The rain during the night had stopped, and I could see blue sky between the parting clouds. The edges of the clouds were shining in the morning sun. It was moved by the great beauty of nature that God has created, and I slowed down to gaze at the sky. Then I noticed a small puddle on the ground. It was surrounded by pebbles and mud. However, a portion of the beautiful sky above was reflected in the surface of the puddle. Then I thought, the beautiful sky is like God and we humans are like the puddles. In contrast to the huge sky, the puddle was tiny yet its tranquil surface reflected and showed me the beauty of the sky. What about me? Is my heart tranquil and peaceful? Not always. My heart is troubled from time to time. On Sundays, I go to church and feel peaceful. But when I'm back in everyday life, I sometimes find myself getting irritated. I want to be like the puddle, tiny but peaceful reflecting God's love and sharing it with others. And that comes from Isako Hadachi from Kanagawa, Japan. Mm. And the prayer focus, those who travel to work. And we used to do it every day for about 30 some odd years. And the thought for the day is when my heart is at peace, I can reflect God's great love. I see a lot of pictures, a lot of times of uh, photographers, professional photographers that take pictures of lakes with the mountain and the cloud reflecting in it. And the, the lake surface is just like glass, just a pure old day sheet of glass. And it's really, really pretty. That was the first thing I thought about when I saw this. And 
the sun or the moon coming up over the ocean when you're 60 miles out at sea or even farther when you can see nothing but water. It's just, it's a reflection and it's really, really pretty. We have a, we have a park down here in Birmingham. It's Railroad Park. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got a, uh, I mean, the picture's not showing it very good on that, but it's got a pond there in the middle of the, of the park. And it's a good area to go and see the buildings, uh, you know, at night when they're lit up and everything, just a, a cool reflection of those buildings looking back. And like you said, many photographers have taken, you no, know, not built, not buildings, but just like nature. Right. And how it reflects and. Um, I mean, um, when you and Sherry went to Canada several years ago, I think y'all had some beautiful pictures. Lake Louise. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And river country down here at Christmas. Yeah. When I, it, the reflection of the Christmas lights. Drive down Rainbow Drive, look over there and you see it reflecting in the water. It's nice. That's right. Makes you want to just pull off to the side of the road and gaze at it a little bit. A little cheaper if you do it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you can't see the reflection from the park itself. I know. Of course, it. you will get a ticket for stopping on the side of the road right there, too. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. So we just have to drive slow. Yeah. Anyone else? Very well, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for offering your great love to us. Calm our souls and use us to reflect your love. Amen. Amen. Hey, Joey. Yeah. I am going to leave and come back. And okay. See if, if I can get a better connection. I don't know if it'll help or not. Well, I don't know if you, um, is your modem right there, like to the internet? Is it right there on your desk? It's behind the behind the thing i don't know i don't know if it would help or not but it, just try maybe uh, unplugging it for like 30 seconds or a minute and then plugging it back in of course it'll take a little while for it to get booted back up i don't know if you want to do that now or just try to do what you said but well that may that may take a little bit okay and it may mess everything up may, may mess everything else up in your house i don't want to do that right now so yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try leaving, and so I'll, I'll leave and come back in. Okay. All right. Sounds good. And, and away he went. And away he went. Poof. <laughs> now we can. Now we can act up, y'all. Yeah. We're talking about the teacher. The, pre while the teacher's gone. The preacher has left. When when <laughs> the cat's away, the mice will play, as they say. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, I guess we can go ahead and get started, and then uh, with this Monday, and um, yeah, we can do that. Let him back in when he joins us. So Monday, May the second, no distance in prayer. And Matthew eighteen twenty says, Jesus said, "Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them." And thank goodness for that. Yeah. When I serve, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did you say something, Judy? I'm sorry. Oh, I just agreed. Amen. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That kind of came in the okay. kind of late there. So I just want, I didn't want to talk over you there. Um, so the, the devotion says, when I served as a pastor at a church in Pennsylvania, where is Antoinette when we need her? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so someone called me with a personal concern. As the conversation ended, I asked if I could pray with him. Sounding surprised, he asked, can we do that over the phone? Praying over the phone was new for him. Maybe it doesn't sound strange to us today, but it's easy to resist at first that which is different. But we prayed and God did, this, did the rest. Every generation creates new ways of expressing love for Christ. As a pastor, I'm always searching for innovative ways to reach people. Social media has become the new way to proclaim the, the same message, Jesus and his redeeming love for us on the cross. We hear the word from Matthew's gospel, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Christ is the glue that binds us, even though 
our new technologies, even, even through our new technologies. Years ago, I heard another phrase that stuck with me, and I think about it when I pray with people over the phone or on social media. There is no distance in prayer. Because of Christ, we have a strong connection holding us together. Amen for that. And this comes from Cletus L. Hall III from Pennsylvania. The prayer focus for this day, churches working with new technology. And the thought for this day, there is no distance in prayer. And boy, does this describe us the last two years. Yes, it does. And a lot of other churches as well, obviously. Um, everybody's, everybody's had to make adjustments. Um, you're there for a while. The churches were empty or most churches were empty. You know, some, some churches may have been doing services maybe out in the parking lot and spaced out and everything like that. But what, what a difference or that, that our world has been through in, in the last, just the last two years. Um, very thankful for this technology. You know, what we're doing right now is because of what happened started two years ago. Um, I forgot whose idea it was to start meeting on Thursdays uh, to um, discuss. I think we were on a, uh, a, a different book at the time, like a Pentecost book or something like that. Um, but I'm thankful for this. Um, obviously, this is th this Thursday Zoom meetings brought me uh, back to the church for a little bit and, uh, you know, very thankful for that and, and just thankful that our services were able to continue and that we were able to still minister to anybody that was watching our services and still watching our services. So, and very thankful for all of our Facebook and YouTube family as well. Does Thank anybody you. else have any thoughts on this one? Hmm. No thoughts on this one. Going once, going twice. Sold. All right, very well. Let us pray, and we'll move on to Tuesday. Dear Lord, remind us that you can draw us together in community, no matter the physical distance between us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Do right, you want me to do Tuesday? Go for it, and I'll do Wednesday and kind of rotate them out here. All right. Tuesday, May 3, spiritual clutter. Jeremiah 4, 14. O Jerusalem, wash your heart clean of wickedness so that you may be saved. How long shall your evil schemes lodge within you? The apartment building I had lived in for four years closed. As my neighbors and I began to move out, I marveled at the amount of stuff people had been able to fit into these apartments. My own quarters had been pretty bare, but there were always plenty of room for the regular stream of friends coming in and out to visit. Had I accumulated more things, there would not be, have been enough space for all of the shared th meals, impromptu dancing, and games of charades with those I cared about. Though I'm not an avid collector of material possessions, I do have a tendency to store up unnecessary and even dangerous things to my heart, grudges, harsh words, hypocritical thoughts, and bad attitudes. My heart can become so disorderly that there's little room left for God or other people, unless I give the Holy Spirit complete freedom to remove everything that is valuable. I will remain isolated in the cramped confines of spiritual clutter. God longs to live close to us, to share the space of our lives so we can enjoy intimacy with God and walk, one an walk with one another. Clearing the junk out of our hearts can be difficult, but when we do, we open ourselves to experiencing life as God meant it to be. And that comes from Megan Anderson from Indiana, USA. 
And the prayer focus is people who have lost their housing. And the thought for the day is what do I need to clean out of my heart to make more room for God? And that prayer focus, the first thing that comes to mind is the people of Ukraine. It's just it's just really sad what's going on over there. Yep. And welcome back, Joe. Good to be back. How are we looking? Any better? Are we still robots or pixels? Uh, <laughs> so far, so good. Uh, I lost all of the emails with the links. <laughs> I, I've been doing the same thing every week for two years. <laughs> now they're all gone. <laughs> no. Yeah. Good. Anyways, so where where are we? Jerry Tuesday. just read Tuesday. Yeah, just read Tuesday. So it's done. Yeah. We're, we're getting ready have, to pray. And if you have any if you have any thoughts on Mondays, which is talking about the last two years, how we've been working to st stay connected virtually and stuff like that. You can obviously share your thoughts if you want to. Well, I, I, as a matter of fact, I, I, I restarted the router, and but I could I heard you uh, in what you said. Uh, I heard it off of Mary Jean's phone. Okay, uh, but uh, you know, I, I think it's just. T to me, I mean, I know there's just a handful of us on tonight, but uh, it's still a blessing to me. And, uh, I just, uh, just like with church on Sundays, uh, I, I wish people could see the value in, in what this hour means. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> really is uh, something special. That's it for me. Okay. Anybody else have any on spiritual clutter? I think it's always good, as always, you know, even with, with our own personal space and our own spiritual life is to go through and just kind of clean out some stuff that may, may be hindering us. Yep. You know, from, from our walk and, um, you know, walk through life with God or walk, walk through our house with so much stuff everywhere. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to, good to kind of clean out every once in a while. Yeah. You can even walk around in the storage room at the church now. There you go. We just, y'all just <laughs> took care of that. Didn't you? Uh, you mentioned too, real quick, uh, you mentioned the people of Ukraine. Every time they do a drone shot of going over an area that is just absolutely devastated that's right i just i just cannot imagine i mean somebody dropping bombs in our neighborhood here or you know the neighborhood where y'all live everybody and just taking out houses and destroying everything i just cannot yeah. imagine yeah. that and to to just to be you know to be Vladimir Putin and just being totally okay with dropping bombs on people is just absolutely just mind blowing, but crazy. Yeah, partially, if you want to get just a little bit of idea of what it's like, go out to your water meter and shut shut the valve off. Go to your power meter box and flip the main breaker yeah. Yeah. and go uh take all the food in your cabinets in your refrigerator in your freezer and throw it in the trash figuratively yeah. no food no water no power uh you you, you world changes and uh, it's just, uh, I, I tell you, some, some of the things, and I don't know if I said it last week or what, I, it may have been Sunday school, um, but something that just, just, I can't get out of my mind is how many people have to die? Yeah. How many, how many children have to die? 
How many women have to die? How many innocent old people have to die? I mean, what's that number? Is it a thousand? Is it 10,000? Is it 50,000? Um, you know, it, 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 for, for what? You know? And the millions of evacuees, what are, what are they going to have to come back to if they ever get to come back? Well, I, I, I'm just guessing, but I'm going to guess half of them won't come back. Yeah. And the ones that do come back, they're going to come back to a destroyed city, whichever, wherever that is. And it's terrible. So, I, you know, I, I, I just, uh, we've been, John Hagee Ministries, he, he's, he's a big supporter Absolutely. of Israel. Wherever it is. He, uh, yeah. he, he, was talk, he was talking about uh, trying to, to raise money and support for the Ukrainian people. And he was talking about uh, back in World War II, uh, how, how long people like us, and, and he was talking about Christians, how long did Christians sit back and said nothing and did nothing uh, until they killed six million Jews? Yeah. And, uh, and and I don't have the answer. I don't know what the right thing to do is. I don't know what the best thing to do is. But it just it it just it just hurts me uh, to think about all those people that are struggling. And uh, I just wish there was. I wish something would be done. Something would happen. You know, I wish Putin would have a epiphany, a change of heart, and and say, "Hey, it's over." But probably not going to happen. But uh, anyways, sorry, I didn't mean to get off track. Not a problem. This reminds us how blessed we are. You ain't kidding. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, any other thoughts? All right, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us enough to enter our messy hearts in clear space eternal life. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Y'all filled in for me. I, I'll uh, I'll do them unless somebody wants them. Uh, Wednesday, May fourth. May the fourth be with you, and also with you. <laughs> <laughs> Standing strong. Proverbs one ten says, "If sinners entice you, do not consent." Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in the hall with my fellow university classmates, I waited in tense silence for the French test to be distributed. This was my final language exam and I needed to pass. But when the test was handed out, I couldn't make sense of it. I noticed my classmates cheating and was tempted to join them thinking, cheat now and repent later. God is merciful, right? You don't, you don't want to risk failing. We've all experienced situations like this. Like Eve, we feel tempted by fruit that would compromise the life God wants us to have. The key to standing our ground against temptation is to know our convic convictions and commit to them in our hearts. Daniel modeled this when he <clears throat> resolved to keep the diet laid out in the Jewish law and avoid foods provided by the king of Babylon. God honored and rewarded his commitment. When we know what our faith requires and commit to it, we can fight temptation, even if that means failing and retaking a French test like I did. And that is from Joseph Adioye from Kwara, Nigeria. <clears throat> Prayer focus is on students preparing for exams. 
The thought for the day is I will commit to God's way, knowing that it is always better. <clears throat> mm. Just on a side note, this kind of reminded me of um, a good friend, Rodney Lankford, uh, married to Stacy Culp, their son, uh, Will. Lankford uh, had his last uh, exams today and Friday. Things are a little different now than when I was in school. Well, he got finished with his eight o'clock exam, had his last uh, next exam tomorrow, but he decided that he would go ahead and take it anyway, get it over with. So I guess you can just take it whenever you want to now. And uh, so he took it, made an A plus in the class, and uh, it is the uh, most difficult uh, accounting class at the university. So I know he's glad to have that behind him and uh, he's a fine young man, makes straight A's and or he got him a big fancy job with one of the big accounting companies in America. <clears throat> so he, he's doing well. But uh, the idea of temptation, speaking of college students, you know, I, I, I can vaguely remember what it was like to be in college. And let me tell you something, folks. Uh, there's all kinds of temptations everywhere you turn. Uh, and, you know, we may not realize it, but there are a lot of temptations uh, in our lives today. I think as we get older, and Joey, you probably have noticed this, and, and, and 30 more years, you'll uh, notice it a whole lot more probably. Uh, I, I think... Uh, I think the temptations uh, are, are not as hard to resist the older you get. And, and I, I think it's just uh, uh, an idea of not only maturity, but spiritual maturity. And uh, I think God blesses us with, uh, with faith and resolve and determination to do what's right. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy standing strong. I can tell you that. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely tough, but, uh, you know, the Bible tells us that uh, with Jesus in our corner, we can do anything. Amen. Any thoughts? I think it's a whole lot more difficult for kids in college to resist temptations than it is for people our age. I think too, you know, every generation has a, um, you know, a, a something that kind of, you know, the temptation, um, what am I trying to say here? Like, well, basically, I think what has made it a lot worse for people that are my age, younger, and maybe a little older than me, um, especially those in college now, is everybody's got one of these in their hands. Yeah. And I'm holding up a cell phone uh, for those that are listening. And it's so easy to pull up something on here and say, hey, oh, that look what that person's doing. I need to do that too so I can be part of the cool club, no matter what it is. That's why when I see all these crazy challenges, I don't know why they call them a challenge, but like these crazy things like these, you know, kids eating Tide Pods, yeah, you know, just doing know. stupid stuff. Like who, like <laughs> who, ha who thinks it's okay to do this? I mean, I mean, and, and that's, and that's with anything. I mean, but it's, it's just important to be grounded. And, I, and, and again, I, I'm thankful that for the raising that I had in my life, that I'm firmly grounded in my faith and, that has helped me so many times through my time in college and school, like high school and stuff like that. Because like you said, there's a lot of temptation out there. So, If Mary Jean's mom was closer to the microphone, she would ask you all if everybody was jumping off a cliff, would you, would you follow them doing that? Mm. My question is if 
they stuck their head in the fire with you. There you go. Same thing. Yep, I agree. Yep. Uh, you know, it, it really just kind of goes back. Uh, you've heard me say it so many times. One of the best things my dad ever did for me from a very, very young age, my dad taught me right from wrong. Yep. Uh, I never in my life one time could I ever say, Daddy, I didn't know that was wrong. He'd look at me and say, he'd say, Joseph, you knew that was wrong, didn't you? <laughs> I'd say, yes, Daddy. <laughs> so uh, I, I was blessed. And, uh, and rarely did I get wrapped up in something I shouldn't be doing. I did. I mean, I'm not going to say I didn't, but... Uh, it, uh, I, I tell you, ha having have learned the things that my dad taught me made life a lot easier than it could have been otherwise. All right, any other thoughts on standing strong before we pray? Tony Nunn says, the cliff was one of my mother's favorite sayings. The cliff. Yeah. Amen, Tony. All right, let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, teach us the truth of your word. Empower us to live in ways that glorify you. Amen. Amen. Jeff, can I say something about that one real quick? Yeah, yes, you can. <laughs> uh, looking back on my life, I know I haven't always done things the right way. I've not lived right, but... I'm just thankful that no matter what I've done, God has forgiven me and put it behind him that, that it will never be there again. Amen. Amen to that. Uh, and I, I think we would, we would all concur uh, and could say the exact same thing, Jude. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Okay, Thursday, May 5th, the promise of peace. Philippians 4, 7 says, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Since my husband, Doug, became ill a few years ago, we've curtailed many of our activities, including driving in the snow. When it snows on a Sunday, we have a home worship service together. Doug plays the piano. We take turns reading scripture, and we listen to a sermon online. One Sunday, I couldn't concentrate on our worship. Snow had fallen fast during the night, and I was worried about clearing the driveway. How can I possibly shovel it myself? We were nearly finished with our service when I heard scraping outside. I peeked out the window and saw two neighbor boys clearing the driveway. What an answer to our need. Since then, the boys have shoveled for us whenever it snows. Philippians 4, 6 tells us not to be anxious, but to present our request to God with thanksgiving. This command comes with a promise the peace of God. I am not sure I prayed about shoveling the snow that day, but since then, whenever I face a new challenge, I pray, Lord, you know we need blank or fill in the blank. Thank you for your, your provision. Answers don't always come in the way I expect. Sometimes God shows me how I can handle the task other times, God sends someone to help. No matter the situation, God provides. And that is from Elizabeth Erlinson from the Cornhusker state of Nebraska. The prayer focus is on people with limited ability to leave home. And the thought for the day is God knows exactly what I need today. Amen, Amen to that. Amen. You know, I'm I'm right at 59 and a half years old. And, uh, 
you've heard me say this a lot of times, uh, but for 59 and a half years, uh, God has provided for me uh, with everything that I need and most everything that I've ever wanted. Hadn't got all everything that I've ever wanted. And the some of those things that I hadn't gotten, I hadn't needed, and God knew that. But uh, uh, but but really, uh, I've always had decent clothes to wear. Always had a decent roof over my head. Haven't always had a decent car to drive, but I've, but I've had a car to drive. I mean. Uh, very few times in my life have I had to hoof it and walk somewhere. Um, been blessed with great friends. Uh, and I tell you, since, uh, since we got active in church, uh, in my life, uh, God has put people uh, in our lives and blessed us with great friends. And, and I consider all of y'all in that category. Any thoughts? I don't know if y'all heard us in the corner Sunday night when we were there playing and singing together, but one of the songs we sang is Thank You, Lord, for Your Blessings on Me. Yes, I did. I did mm -hmm. hear that, Jill. That's some years that we were talking about um, shoes on your feet, roof over your head, and all that. I thought about that song. That's right. That's a great song. That's a good one. I, it makes you, uh, it makes you think about how humble you know, we ought to be, yeah. how blessed we are. I know one of the things, one of the good things about humanity within the last two years that has been brought out, and there's not a whole lot of good things you can highlight, but there is, there is some, and this is one of them, is seeing how, uh, how compassionate people are towards others. Uh, you don't see it a whole lot, but it is out there. And especially when, when we were at the beginning of the, the pandemic and you had a lot of elderly people and those that were very immunocompromised, you know, they, they were in fear of getting out and doing anything. And one of the things I very much appreciated were churches and, you know, community groups, whatever, that went out and got groceries for these people and delivered them to their front door. And, um, you know, even some... Some stores had special hours where people that were elderly or uh, you know immunocompromised or whatever had an opportunity to come in before everybody else, which I thought was awesome. Um, so that just reminds me there is a lot of good out there still. Yep. That's right. You know, Joey, I heard you, you talk about good come out of it. Uh, I mean, this, uh, I hear Antoinette talk a lot about how, how much this Thursday night means to her. And I'm sure if she wasn't traveling, she would she'd be on here with us. But um, I, I think it was my idea. Uh, and the reason I chose Thursday nights is it was my hopes that folks that went to church on Wednesday night would be able to join us on Thursday night. Uh, and it just, that's the reason it, uh, I, that was, I, if I did in fact choose Thursdays, that's why I did. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, uh, it's just one of those things. Uh, and it's just, it's just been, and, and you know, it, it was kind of meant to take the place of Sunday school. And now we're back in Sunday school, but uh, I, you know, I, I enjoy doing this on Thursday nights, and hopefully it will grow, and uh, and then we'll get more people to to join us. And uh, so, any other thoughts? on this promise of peace. Okay, well, if no one else has anything, anything from the peanut gallery here? <laughs> I 
Well, Mary Jean's ready for wrestling. She ain't Eight o'clock. Got to get off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh all right well y'all let's uh uh let's pray let's buy this dear lord we uh i think even with the technical difficulties it's been a blessing tonight uh, scripture earlier said that where two or three are gathered uh in the name you'll be amongst us and even though we've been a uh, small crowd tonight. Uh, we feel your blessing upon our lives. Lord, we're uh, thankful for the good news that Bill Owen got from his from his tests, and we pray for continued healing. Uh, Lord, we pray we pray for Laura and the Smith family uh, as we mourn the loss of our good friend Wild Bill. Pray for the Philip. Mager family, uh, the Andy Key family, uh, or anyone who, who may be struggling with health issues, personal problems, uh, the anxiety of all the things that are going on in the world today. Or we just ask that, uh, that you would uh, touch our church family in a special way. Lord, help us uh, to be a blessing to others. Or we were thankful for what a wonderful day we had last Sunday. We're thankful for this time tonight, Lord. And we're gonna we're gonna praise your name and thank you for what may happen this coming Sunday. But Lord, until then, uh, we just ask that you would give us uh, a good night's rest tonight, uh, the strength and courage wisdom to be a bright shining light for all those uh, we see tomorrow uh, lord give us a, give us a strong desire to invite uh, someone to church this coming sunday so that they might uh, feel the love that we feel each time we gather together in your honor lord we uh thank because you love us. Or we just, we just want you to know that even though we fall short each day, we want to praise your name and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Amen.